Hello, welcome to this section on IPv4 header format. Let us understand the rationale behind the different fields of IP header, especially we are going to touch upon IPv4 header, IPv6 is not the focus of this discussion. Now before we get into the details of what are the fields in the IPv4 header and what do they do, let us understand where does the IP come from in the OSI layer. We have host, maybe we will call it as host A, then there is some host B, they are communicating over the network and we have routers on the way. Now what does the application running on this host do? They want to communicate over the network, maybe with the counterpart of the application which is running on some other host. Maybe a Skype call or it could be a, a video YouTube being streamed from one source to the other. Now whatever is the data to be transmitted over the network has to be generated by one end and consumed by some other end. So let us assume that this is the sender. It could be that communication will be happening on both sides. It's not that always a sender is feeding. It's a YouTube streaming then it is a sender is always sending some data and the receiver is getting it. But most of the time when you have a Skype call or a WhatsApp video call, you can see that the data is flowing in both directions, right? So when the discussion is happening. So let us assume in both cases there is some data flowing between two different hosts. Now the application layer generates the data then we have other layers which are coming in L1, L2, L3 and L4. We are not going beyond that. So application is here. Now it could be a TCP or UDP which is running on L4 level. The application data could use the TCP streaming if it has to be a reliable connection oriented disk, no, uh, oriented information flow or it can be connectionless. Now let us assume the best thing is the connection oriented call which is a TCP call happening TCP socket between two sources. Now that in turn is finally going to be converted into IP packet. So L4 layer which is running either TCP or UDP is going to use L3 which is network layer to send the data. So we are using L3 layer network layer for sending the TCP or UDP data as a IP packets. Now that in turn is going to use L2 which is going to be Ethernet or some other connection between two different routers or between the host there will be multiple Ethernet connections and Ethernet or some other connection which you have Wi-Fi or some other medium to send the data across which is going to be frames. Now for the packet which is generated IP packet is going to be sitting on IP payload IP payload which is coming from L3 layer is going to be packaged into Ethernet frame. Let us assume for a uh, discussion L2. Ethernet is running on L2 and it is going to be the IP payload is going to be sitting inside. Now when that Ethernet is used it there will be connections between these routers which could be of some medium. It could be Wi-Fi or optical cable or Ethernet or whatever. Now, we normally what we do, we, we our intent is to send the IP packet over this particular links between the routers finally till it reaches the destination. Now, always remember the IP packet which is flowing is a best effort delivery that each router is trying to send that packet IP packet over the network towards the destination IP address. So this the host is a destination IP address. Always remember the IP addresses are universal and hierarchical and we use that for routing because that only has all the hosts which are on the network have a unique IP addresses assigned to it which will be not fixed it could be dynamically allocated based on the network they are connected to but 
Finally, what we are going to use for communication or uh, routing the packet is the IP addresses which are given to different hosts in the network, internet. So that means what the IP uh, addresses are going to be seen by the router. So the IP header should have who is the source IP which is generating the traffic and then what is the destination IP it wants the packet to be delivered to. So always remember that the routers are looking at the IP source address is where actually the, the packet has originated from and the destination IP where it is supposed to be finally delivered to. So this I source address and IP destination IP addresses within the header of IP does not change while the packet is traveling over the network. But on every hop between the host to this router and then from this router to this router, everything we call it as a hop. Every hop, it is going to be traveling over different medium. It could be Ethernet or a Wi-Fi or a optical or whatever medium the these routers are connected to each other. So the IP packet is going to be packaged into a different Ethernet frame whenever they cross one hot router to the another router between the different links used to using uh, different links. So the Ethernet frame that is going to be carrying the IP packet is going to be changing its own destination MAC address and source MAC address whereas the IP packet is going to be sitting on it traveling with the Ethernet on the Ethernet frame towards the destination. As I mentioned it is a best effort so it is going. Now one more field within the IP header apart from the source IP and the destination IP we have a TTL field which is a time to leave. So why is this field given in that IP header because as I mentioned it is a entire internet wherein the packets are going through different routers on the way that packet may get lost because uh, it is not able to find the route and it may get lost in the internet. In that case what happens is those packets which have lost the destination, reaching the destination IP, it might be traveling in the network forever. Could be possible that the routers in between do not know where the destination IP is and they may route it wrongly and the packet may travel different routers and they, they may get lost and the, they may be cycling through the internet. So to avoid that indefinitely some packets living in the network hogging the bandwidth of all the links across the through which they are flowing through the TTL is maintained. What is the purpose of TTL? Every router when it is sending the packet across is going to decrement the TTL value. So while initiating the uh, IP packet in the host A, TTL value is going to be fixed at some value is put maybe 64 and then on every hop we call it as every router is a hop it is decremented so it will be 64 here when it comes here it will be 63 and it will be decremented to 62 when it comes here so it goes on so in case if the packet is flowing through the network forever then it will be decrementing to zero and when the TTL is zero the packet is going to be dropped so there is no communication go happening to the source that it has lost the it has dropped the packet because this is a best effort traffic, best effort delivery and IP does not guarantee that all the IP packet that you give it to the network is guaranteed to be delivered. Now you may wonder that I told you that there is a connection oriented reliable connection TCP is going to be there which is sitting on top of IP whereas IP is not reliable whereas TCP is supposed to be a reliable connection. Now how, how is it possible that you can send a reliable or establish a reliable connection using an unreliable IP network? The philosophy here is the IP network is made at a simple to make sure that the routers are not hogging the you no know, they are not busy delivering the packet on time or reliably but they will do their best effort while routing it but the TCP running on the two hosts take care of making sure that all the data that has been put by the TCP is delivered at the other end. So if there is a one IP packet missing then there will be a acknowledgement negative acknowledgement 
and then the same things will be re-telecast, re broadcast or resent and the every packet is received. So that way the higher, higher layers takes care of uh, making sure that the packets, all the data is reaching the other end. So in this discussion, I have already covered about couple of fields in the IP header, which will actually prepare you for understanding the rest of the discussion. Now, let us see what is the purpose of headers now. Okay. I leave some time for uh, you to think about, you can pause it and then think about what should be the answer for this. If you think every layer is having a header like Ethernet header at the L2 level, IP header at the L3 level and TCP and UDP headers at the L4 level. Now these headers whatever we fill in all or the, the headers are going to be filled in by the sender and then not all of them okay ethernet header will be filled by the as i mentioned that individual routers on the way is going to be generating those ethernet headers whereas the ip header and the tcp header or udp header whichever is above is going to be done by the ends okay hosts the sender host is going to be sending it but on the way what is happening is ttl field is going to be changed or some other field uh, might be changed, checksum or child come to that and then it is going to be consumed by the equivalent layer on the other end so or on the way so the headers in a packet of level n is processed by the same level okay it's not that it is going to be processed by above or below level okay now what is the data or payload purpose of payload now purpose of payload in a packet suppose payload of level l n remember it is delivered like this and then it is being given to the network like this and then delivered like this. So whatever is the L3 IP, pay, IP packet is going to be the payload on L2 level. Similarly, whatever is the L4 UTCP UDP packet is going to be the payload on the L, L3 level. Okay. So in that case, payload of LN is processed by See, payload of LN is processed by on the receiving end, whatever is the payload coming here, LN is going to be processed by this layer, right? Because this payload is given to it. This current header is processed and the payload of LN is processed by LN plus 1. Okay? So, B is the answer, LN plus 1 is a layer which is going to process that. So, you have to send across the payload what you have to the upper layer on receiving. So purpose of each Ethernet header, I think Ethernet has been understood earlier. Um, if you have studied about it, preamble is the one field which is a continuous 0, 1, meaning that 7 bytes of alternating 0 and 1 gives you a square pulse which is required for the clocks of the sender and the receiver to be synchronized. And the SFD is a, a field which is used for by the receiver to make sure that it is receiving it properly the clocks are synchronized and then the destination MAC address and source MAC address are given and the length is the length field of the data okay what do you have so CRC is the cyclic redundancy check um, code which actually computes the CRC is computed based on this whichever is data and the header and that will be used by the receiver to make sure that the data is received intact or not. So if you go through this particular mapping of this preamble and this SFD are stripped by L1. Okay, it is actually belong to L1 layer and then the rest of it is for L2. Okay, But Ethernet is always L2 and L1. See remember that Ethernet protocol is L2 and L1 and destination address is which is going to be receiving the data and by my own address when I am, I am receiving a Ethernet frame, a destination address is my own address, the MAC address of my own uh, a network uh, interface card. So that's why I have taken the packet and looking at it and going to pass it across to the payload of my Ethernet frame. I am going to pass it onto IP layer. Source address is what is the immediate other end of the device in the link which is sending it to me. And who might respond to if I need to reply. Suppose if I, there is an error, 
that Ethernet frame has to be replied, then that will be uh, processing it. Length is the data to reduce the amount of data that is there in it, and CRC is whether the data frame is received without any errors or not. So, IP payload. Now, let us look at the which I already explained. IP payload is the data that belongs to which layer? IP layer is here, its payload comes from the top, right? So, it is L4, right? So, option C. Now, what happens in normal scenario is multiple applications make use of the IP layer below. There may be some TCP connection or UDP connection based on what type of applications are there running and then they are using the network below to communicate. So, there are the same common network is uh, getting the data and it is demultiplexed and delivered it and while sending different data coming from different applications on a computer host is multiplexed and sent across the network. So, you can imagine what, where the multiplexing and demultiplexing happen. So, how does the different applications make use of it? So, TCP and UDP connection oriented and connectionless uh, protocols which uses the connectionless IP and there are different applications which are running on it uh, which I that is not a focus now right now let us not discuss about those applications here and uh, DNS uses uh, UDP and uh, HTTP and FTP they use uh, TCP connection whereas small files need to be transferred which are need not be reliable is TFTP which uses UDP connection. So now what type of data they generate that needs to be actually IP protocol is actually processing two kinds of applications they have to cater for two different type of applications TCP and UDP have different expectations from the IP but still IP is open and it is common for both TCP is protocol uses these applications or uh, these applications use the TCP protocol and UDP protocol is being used by the following uh, scenarios and they have small amount of data to share whereas TCP normally is a streaming of video or a big file which has a large amount of data to share. So IP needs to take care of delivering not only small amount of data it should be large amount of data too because both TCP and UDP are going to be using the IP underneath. Now TFTP is some simple file transfer which is happening that is uh, trivial. Now what types of payloads IP need to carry both TCP and UDP in gigabytes of range UDP are few bytes or kilobytes. Now if IP protocol needs to support different size of data and it also support connection oriented protocols like TCP and connectionless protocol like UDP but IP itself is a connectionless best effort protocol. Okay. So now let us on think about IP needs to send the payload over L2 and L1. See what is above is TCP and UDP. We, we are talking about IP which is L3. What is above is L4 which could be TCP or UDP and what is below is L2 and L1 which is Ethernet or some other Wi-Fi connection that you have below. So each physical medium that you have below the IP layer has some maximum transmission unit. That means what is the maximum number of bytes that you can send in particular transmission. We cannot send more than that because if you uh, though based on the type of link you have that protocol is already having a limit on how much of bytes it can send. Ethernet is 1500 bytes and uh, Wi-Fi is 2312. Now if that MTU which is equivalent to the MTU is equivalent to the IP payload that is coming from L3 layer okay it is equivalent to IP payload. Now I mentioned that IP itself is going to be supporting TCP and UDP and whereas TCP is a huge amount of data to come. Now it receives a huge amount of data from the top but it has to deliver it to only like a chunks of 1500 bytes that means it has to do some chopping of those packets in small pieces and send it across the ethernet. So there is a segmentation of that original data that has been received needs to be done and then on the receiving side it has to be assembled. So segmentation and reassembly are the activities of IP layer. So if it receives a bigger chunk of data it has to be segmented over the physical link and receiving it needs to reassemble the data. So this is what is called fragmentation and reassembly. This we will see it in the next lecture. Now let us see how IP header format or IPv4 header to be specific 
accomplishes the job it has got means it has to deliver a package to as a maximum possible way and then my best effort traffic best effort delivery and then it should be able to handle huge amount of data segment it send it across and reassemble it at the receiving end so this is the ip header that we are trying to understand if you look at the way the packets are sent over the network the order is called network byte order now network byte order is big endian okay now why did they decide about the particular way the bytes are going to be transferred over the network because ip itself ip header or ip data packet itself is always shown in terms of 32 bits or 4 bytes now this needs to be sent across the network you have two ways of doing it so let me write those bytes four bytes that of data we have this is byte 0 to byte 3 now i can decide to send this first then followed by this then this and this 1 2 3 4 i can send it in this order or i may that is called big indian order or i can send the lower byte first second third fourth but the way it is stored in the memory in a cpu they follow big NDNS or little NDNS in the same way. A machine which is storing within the local copy of the data within its own memory. As long as the machine is handling within its own CPU and memory, they can have a convention of big NDN or little NDN and they know and they are doing it within their machine. But now we are talking about say sharing the data across the network. So a yeah, big NDN machine may be sharing it over with the other little NDN machine or little NDN machine with the other big NDN machine whatever the way they are transferring the pipes over the network should be common otherwise there will be a confusion you cannot say that i am following a big indian machine i am a big indian machine so i will send it in a big indian order and then another machine will say i am a little indian machine so i will send it in a little indian order on the network will be a total confusion so network byte order is one which is deciding that every machine irrespective of whatever indian is being followed in its in within itself needs to send the data in the big indian order in that case, it any machine has to send the higher order byte if it is a 32 bit data first and then followed by the other ones. So this is what is called network byte order because of which you can see that the IP header is also designed such a way that you come to know of what version of the packet you are getting it. Whether yeah, there is a IPv4 and IPv6 which is both of the protocols are running in parallel now the stacks could be IPv4 or IPv6. Based on this particular number, you, the receiving end will know whether this packet is a IPv4 or IPv6. Now, why did they decide to put the version number here? Because this is a higher order byte. This is a bit 0 and this bit 31. And this is going to be received by the receiving end first, are followed by other bytes in the Ethernet packet. So the decision has to be taken based on whether this is IPv4 or IPv6, the rest of the fields in the IP header is going to be understood by the receiver. So it is in the beginning. Now other fields, I will explain it as we go over the slides now. So this is the total IP header portion. This is called optional field, okay, uh, which could be varying. Now these fields, whatever I say, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This 5 into 4 bytes, 20 bytes are fixed, always it's going to be there. Then there could be optional fields, which is some number. Now we'll see how many and the in the next slide. Okay. Now datagram includes both the header and the, so when we say datagram, it's header plus the data, which is varying data, variable number of data. And even header is also varying length. So because header is also varying length, there is a header length field which also needs to be mentioned. Now there are four bits reserved for it. Okay, only four bits. That means you can maximum represent 00, 0 to 111, which is this value is 0, this is 15. So you cannot represent more than 15 in the header length. In that case, I cannot represent, I said 20 bytes are there already, right? Now, I can't represent in terms of bytes. So, what is done is header length is given in terms of 4 bytes. 
if I have a value of 1 here, that means 4 bytes of header length is there. But as I told you that 20 bytes are compulsory, then the value which is going to be in the header length field is 5. If this is 5, then you can multiply it by 4 because it always gives you in terms of 4 bytes. So 5 means 5 into 4, 20 bytes of header is there. Okay. If optional fields are there, it is going to have that many number of uh, header. Now, what is the maximum that you can have? The maximum is 15. So 15 into 4, 60. So 60 bytes could be the maximum optional fields totally. 20 is anyway fixed. Remaining 40 could be optional fields. Then you may have a maximum of 60 bytes as header in IP. Now, what about this length field? This length field is at in terms of bytes. This is in terms of bytes. This is in terms of 4 bytes. So, this is 16 bits are there. Bits 16 to B15. Then, you can have 2 power 16 minus 1 because you can have uh, 0x FF, FF, right? 16 bits are there. So, that many number of bytes could be there which includes header plus the payload. So, that much of the IP datagram of size could be represented within an IP datagram. Okay. So, that is the header field. Now, this is the source IP address which is a 32 bit wide value, destination IP address which I mentioned and TTL field time to live is also another field which we saw. Now, the packet format is shown here is different from what was used for Ethernet and Wi-Fi. So, Ethernet and Wi-Fi we mentioned in terms of bytes whereas here we will say in terms of 32 bit values. Now, these are the divisions of the bits. Version is 4 bits. It can be 4 or 6, the value could be. Based on this value, the rest of the fields are processed. Header length is 32 bit words or 4 bytes, 4 bytes of values, multiples of 4. So, most of the time, IP header is with 0 optional field. Okay. Um, this optional field is 0, that means it will be 5. Always you will have a length of 5, 20 bytes. Okay. Only 5 32 bits are there. Header length will have a value of 5 since it is 32 bit words. 5 32 bits words which is the 20 bytes of IP header. Okay. Now, if option fields are there, then you may have to increase that value to uh, 6 or 7, but always it will be multiples of 4, whatever IP address of multiples of 4. You cannot have an odd number or uh, multiples of 2 is the IP header. It is always given in terms of 32 bit value. Now, TOS, type of service. Now, why is the type of service important? IP packet is actually may be carrying a a TCP or UDP data or maybe a real time data what is coming in. So, based on the payload, you may have to treat that particular IP packet or a Ethernet frame in a different way. The routers on the way could give a different way of handling those packets because if it is a real time traffic, then you need to put them ahead of the non real time data which is being carried by network. So, network internet you can imagine that it can have different varies of types of uh, payload, different types of applications using the internet. So, real-time traffic needs to be given a priority over non-real-time data which is flowing through the network. So, this will be taken care of by the routers which is opening up the Ethernet frames and then looking at the IP headers and taking a decision based on the value of TOS, type of service that IP packet is carrying that different treatment can be given. This is called uh, diff service or differenti differentiated service to the packets and the length is a datagram is a length field uh, which is in terms of bytes could be maximum of 2 power 16 minus 1 65,000 is a maximum uh, 535 bytes could be there the physical network over which IP is running however may not support this long packet see the as I said the MTU of Ethernet or uh, Wi-Fi is much lower than the actual payload that it is supposed to be delivering to IP because it is IP datagram itself is in terms of 65k. So, for this reason, IP has to do a fragmentation and DSMB support. So, elements of second word is called ACIR, okay? uh, segmentation and uh, reassembly, which will be explained in the next video. And we'll for a moment, let us not look into these fields now while discussing the IP header format. Okay? Now, we will see. Let me show the header. Now, Time to live is a packet which is given here, which will be decremented by 
the router on the way and if it finds that the value becomes zero the build the router will um, will drop those packets okay ttl is originally used to count the number of seconds spent but now it is hops number of hops over the routers and default initial value is 64 so here different the remember that we have a stp running wherein bridges make sure that they don't ethernet frames don't form loops within the ethernet in the inside a lab but ip packets are over the different networks so they can actually form a loop and there is no guarantee that or uh, there is no global protocol running like similar to stp which is localized to a lab to take care of ip packets forming a loop ethernet frames do not form a loop because of stp protocol running inside a lab whereas ip packets can still form a loop because of misbehaving routers or um, the some of the ip packets ip addresses are not resolved by the routers that can be a loop so that's why the ttl field is uh, provided to take care of a packet hogging the network in the internet now what about the header now other fields protocol field is tcp or udp apart from type of service there is a protocol field also which is uh, within the ip header could be 6 or 17 based on the protocol which is there and which is used for the receiver to demultiplex it okay um, if it is a tcp packet it will be delivered to some port and udp means udp port or a tcp port it will be delivered to so you remember within a host different applications are running and they use the common network interface which is below provided below so when the packet is received you may get a packet belonging to different applications so it has to be demultiplexed based on what type of protocol and which application has sent it and then it will be delivered to it so that linkage is done here now checksum is a field which actually once complement is found and then we compute the checksum of 16 bits of values which are there in the header and add up all the 16 bit values and then compute the checksum and put it here so it is actually checksum is only for a particular header okay it doesn't include the data portion so it only computes the checksum for the entire header field if option field is there it will also be included otherwise it will be only the first 20 bytes uh, except this checksum it will be computing adding the 16 bit values of the header fields and then compute the checksum now one question is whether intermediate routers need to compute the checksum or not because I told you that source address is not going to change, destination IP address is not going to change, but because of the segmentation and reassembly, this offset field could change or even the flags field could change. Apart from that, because each router is going to be decrementing the TTL value, this is going to be changing. Once any field of header is going to be modified, you need to recompute the checksum. Otherwise, the receiver will get it wrongly because if checksum is computed only while sender while sending and not all during the intermediate routers then checksum could fail on receiving so every router on the way needs to find out the checksum and then compute it based on the new header values which are there currently we were based on the maybe if these fields are changed or the ttl field is for sure is going to be changing before it is being dis dispatched to the next link on the way so checksum is computed and passed across the network so that is to make sure that the packet is received properly apart from the ethernet uh, crc there is a checksum also at the ip level to make sure that the packet which has been sent by the sender is received without any corruption now source address is the ip address of the sender who is initiating the ip transaction and destination is a place where it is supposed to be delivered to so this is a global address space and we will talk about the IP addresses in a different uh, discussion and each router is having a routing table and having a mapping of given an IP address is a maximum prefix is checked or mapped okay uh, the network part of the IP address only is uh, used for that mapping but on the way there is no subnet mask while the IP addresses are going so the maximum prefix is used from the MSB side to map it with the IP address and then deliver it on the particular interface. So the routing table on each router is going to be mapping the IP address to an interface number. Okay. 
and whichever IP is likely to be in that interface is sent over that IP interface. Now that's how the routing happens on the network. Now ping and trace route are some examples of um, protocols or a, a utility which is used for finding out whether a particular device with an IP address is alive and at the same time is it willing to reply to ping it will respond back a reply and then you will know that how many uh, whether it is alive or not how long it does it take for the packet to go to the particular machine and come back so it's like a round trip delay and trace route is something which is actually giving you the route in which a particular packet is traversing and uh, suppose if you are having multiple routers on the way what is happening what is done is in the trace route is TTL value is put as 1 initially so this first router is decrementing into 0 and it will send back the reply because ICMP packets when it is dropped the routers are expected to reply to the source IP address saying that I am dropping your packet for TTL becoming 0. So now when it is replying it is going to put the IP address of the interface through which the data is going to be delivered by the source. So you can find out the IP addresses of all the routers on the way when the TTL value is keep on incremented and then sent across the uh, network and when it is initially one this router will respond and again the source is going to send a, a packet same packet to the destination with the TTL value 2. Now that will this second router is going to decrement into 0 and then inform the pack, source uh, IP and then third fourth like this so every time TTL value is incremented while sending the packet till it reaches the destination. So you will know the path the packet is taking on the way. So this is how the trace route is functioning and ping is used for that purpose and TTL is an uh, important uh, element of IP header which is used for finding out the IP addresses of all the router interfaces which are receiving this IP packet while delivering it to the destination towards the destination. So this actually bring us, brings us to the end of this discussion on IP header. I hope this was useful for you to understand every field of IP header. Bye-bye. See you in the next lecture.